Welcome back, and we're still staying with the crucial governorship elections in Oshun State. We're just three days away, and after INEC has spoken uh, with Festus Okoye, we have Miwa Dejobi, who is the, the first public relations officer for the Nigeria Police. It's a pleasure to have you join us on News Hub, sir. Yeah, good morning. Excellent. Uh, all right, Mr. Dejobi, if you can move, if you can step back, move back a little bit so that we can uh, get to see your head room clearly. All right. Excellent. Excellent. So 21,000 is the number of uh, police personnel expected to uh, be on ground for the elections in Oshun State. And um, of course, you would want to help us understand why 21,000 and uh, how they are going to affect the performance or rather the assessment of the elections in Oshun State. Well, we, we plan our deployment based uh, on the number of the polling units. Uh, in Oshun State, we are having 3,763 polling units across the 332 wards and 30 local government councils uh, in Oshun State. So we plan our deployment based on this large number of polling units compared to what we had uh, in Nikiti. So the figure is um, proportional to the number of the polling units we're having, coupled with the, the nature uh, of security rings, arrangements we, we are having in Oshun State. Uh, like we did in Nikiti, and the same thing in Anambra, we are going to replicate what we did in um, Oshun State, uh, having three rings of uh, security arrangements. The outermost ring uh, will be for uh, restriction of movement. This will comprise the military uh, and um, members of the NSCDCs who will enforce uh, restriction of movement order. Then the middle ring will be for those who are harmed and will be a motorized uh, patrol uh, around, the, around the states uh, who will be giving cover to our men that will be deployed to the polling unit who we know that uh, according to the provisions of the law, they are not expected to be harmed. So the middle ring will give them support in case there's anything they can easily raise down to give, give help to them. The innermost are those who are with the um, are the polling units that are not harmed. And we have made sure that every polling unit out of the three uh, 1,763 polling units, every polling unit must have uh, at least one or two police personnel to be assisted. All right, um, we'll try and get back. Looks like we have a connection glitch. Okay. People expect us to put in place, uh, to give escorts to sensitive materials, to give escorts to INEC officials, to give escorts to accredited observers, including journalists, you guys have been moving up and down. We expect to provide security for everybody uh, in national state. So based on the, the nature of uh, this, this exercise, uh, that's why we've been able to plan ahead to have these deployments. Uh, aside from the human deployment, we have asset deployment. Uh, the IGP has approved deployment of armor personnel carriers, including our choppers and our uh, drones to give support uh, to our men uh, on the ground and uh, to connect our activities to our uh, command and control center uh, in uh, Oshogo. So we, we have done both human and material uh, deployment so that we'll be able to have a seamless exercise come uh, July 16, 2022 in Oshun State. And just like INEC, which heads the electoral election management um, team, we've seen improvements uh, with several of the actors. I, I can't forget the picture of uh, people in residents of Edo State uh, cheering uh, policemen as they drove out of town after the elections in uh, Edo State uh, because of um, the sort of sterling performance they put up there and i'm sure it's a picture at the back of the mind of every senior police officer uh, that they would want to leave you know the, uh, at the forefront of every citizen who, who when they've gone for election uh, duties but in oshun state i'm sure that you're thinking also too uh, i was listening to the stakeholders meeting yesterday where the inspector general of police was you know uh, sounded tough especially around together with the INEC uh, chair uh, around vote buying and what they intend to do now I, i'm not i don't I, I'm not sure you're going to disclose to us 
what you are going to do in dealing with vote buying or voter uh, inducement. But you definitely will want the people to play a role in helping curb uh, this um, electoral menace. Well, let, let, me, let, let me say that we, uh, among the deployment we made, we have every sector, every department of Nigerian Police Force, force deployed to Oshun for this election, including our big clothes personnel from uh, uh, Force Intelligence Bureau in Abuja. Uh, these are what the Yoruba man in Oshun State will say, these are, these are the men for undercover operations who will go after those who might want to perpetuate any uh, funny arts, particularly vote buying. We are collaborating with the FCC. Uh, EFCC too has deployed some of its uh, operatives to put to a uh, soon state to go after these people that might want to induce uh, voters. We are mindful of this, and you can see that yesterday the INEC chairman, uh, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, declared this. The Special General Police declared this act too because it's uh, becoming worrisome when we have. Uh, People in the queue, and some people are trying to to buy them over. However, uh, those who are buying are willing to buy uh, votes. Uh, are not coming obvious. You might not notice yourself to have uh, people that are giving you information about them uh, and our operatives who are on undercover operations. So we have we are mindful of this, and we have done what we should uh, to see that we can we we'll be able to curb this um, criminal acts come uh, July. You know, should stay. So we are mindful of that, and we are working towards in this activity. So just, just to remind the viewing audience, anyone involved in voter uh, in inducement or vote buying, um, who is culpable here? Is it the one who is giving the money or the one who is receiving uh, the money? Well, they, they majorly, they, it takes two to tango. Uh, but for, for the, the way the exercise is on, you, we can only lay out, we are, we are going to focus more on the major man, the major actor is trying who has the cash to pay to people. I think by the time that that big big man, quote and unquote, is taken away, I think that that without detention or, or curb uh, that act in that place. So we we got to focus more on the man that has the liquid the quick cash on him to buy votes. It's better for us to go for those ones than to be disturbing those on queue and be picking everybody. That we create. Unnecessary uh, during the polls. I don't think we should go for the receiver now, but we should actually go for the, the giver who has the liquid cash either in his. All right. Um, okay, we'll, we'll try. We'll try and reconnect with uh, Miwa Dejobis raining heavily you know also too so we'll try and see if uh, this connection glitch uh, can be fixed and we can get him back uh, to run us through the process for the Oshun governorship election which happens in three days uh, time and uh, quite a number of things he's saying here the number 21,000 arrived at because they worked the numbers according to the number of polling units where they're going to have to deploy policemen talked about the three rings um, the outer ring and the middle ring the inner ring where you have policemen carrying out duties uh, from restriction of movement uh, to what happens in the polling unit where they provide security for the uh, polling officials as well as for the electorate also too. They also provide security for observers, the media, and quite a number of people also too. And just before we lost connection with him, he was talking about voter inducement and vote buying. And they're going to be focusing more on those who are giving out uh, the money because it's a thinking if you get the kauna, if you get the, if you get the big fish, sends a message across quicker uh, than to the ones on the, on the other side. There's still quite enough, a lot for us to cover. Uh, we hope we can get him back uh, so he can tell us and talk to us some more also too about what the police is doing to ensure that uh, violence doesn't show up in and around the polling units uh, during voting and also after voting. Uh, please stay with us on News Up. We're still looking at the Oshun governorship election. In the last hour, we spoke with uh, the INEC uh, uh, Commission on Voter Information and Education, and now we're on to the first PRO, uh, Miwa Dejobi. We have Miwa Dejobi back. Um, he's going to join us via phone. Miwa Dejobi is a first public relations officer 
and um, we've been talking about the elections in Oshun State, which is three days away from now. 21,000 policemen deployed uh, for the electoral process. And just like he explained, uh, this numbers arrived by going through the number of polling units which require uh, police presence and uh, got a three-ring formation which he talked about. He's also talked about voter inducement and voter uh, vote buying, what the police intends to do about it. They've got a number of things they're working on together with other uh, sister security agencies. So, uh, Mr. Dejobi, if you can hear me, uh, great to have you back. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Excellent. It's, it's the beauty of technology. We can connect any, any way. <laughs> And, and get the word out. So very importantly, you, you talked about just what to expect uh, from the police over there and um, the things they are going to be doing on election day. Uh, but, but very importantly too, um, let us help us understand, uh, we understand there are flashpoints in the state and what the police is intended to do about those flashpoints. Uh, uh, break it down for us. Is it that the polling units in those places have been moved altogether or you are going to have increased police uh, presence uh, there? Well, uh, like I always say, an election I did is an exercise, it's a process, it's not a real thing. Uh, the the pre-election period, we've been able to do uh, test analysis on our state. We have identified hot areas that we need to police heavily. Um, we have these local governments and certain polling units that we need to police heavily. So we have them, we have our list. And we have done our deployments, we have done what we should do. There's no need for me to be mentioning names of areas of here, here, but it is necessary for our people to know that we have identified those areas that are going to be very, very hot based on, on our threat um, assessment on Ocean State. So we, we have done that and we know how to handle those areas professionally. Uh, and I know you're one who loves to work with data and then look at the analysis after. In your years of experience and looking at the democratic culture of this country, we are nearing the end of one phase of uh, the process. The next phase we're looking forward to is uh, election day and then the after election uh, process when the results will be announced. But the pre-election where the campaign happens, um, when you compare and contrast with other states you've seen and uh, you, you, you think that the the culture of um, leave and let's leave uh, peace for peaceful conduct before the election. You think it's been, uh, is, you think it's continuing or you think it's that uh, we still have a culture where people go up in arms against one another just because they want to win an election? Like, like the chairman said yesterday and the cabinet the, the Imperial Majesty of the year in Tongu City on your FIFA was, pass, was present yesterday at the stakeholders forum. I was there as well with the Inspector General of Police. That the Oshun people are known to be a Malu abuse. And Oshun State is the state of the virtues. So I think the, that thing must be, uh, must be exhibited by the people of Oshun State. That, um, and like the ANEC uh, chairman said yesterday, and the KVC too repeated it yesterday that Oshun will be, this period will go. The state will continue to remain a state. So there is no need for us to, to embark on do or die uh, affairs and because of this election. Uh, you can't be a governor on, on dead people. And then you are causing a problem and you don't want to be a governor on dead people. Can you rule the dead? It's not possible. Actually, you are going to rule the living, not the dead. So I, I think the, the, the effort of INEC, please, and uh, stakeholders uh, generally uh, is going to pay off because we have been talking to them to, to embrace peace. And I'm sure they are going to sign the peace accord. I think it's today. Today, today uh, Wednesday, they are going to do that in, um, in Oshugo. Uh, so we, we are hopeful there won't be any problem in Osho State. And because of our business on the threat um, assessment we have done, uh, like I said, we have done certain deployment to certain areas. Uh, we don't want people to think we are coming to intimidate anybody with this heavy deployment because as from tomorrow, we're going to commence our show of force for people to know that we're actually long grant. So, and we just want to appeal to people who say that we are not coming to intimidate anybody. They should come out and have their franchise. But those ones that want to foment trouble should take care of our show state because we are not going to take it away with anybody. Uh, the law is here and it's going to take its course. Uh, let me remind them again that we have established our 
electoral offense desk uh, across the country, and we have activated that in Osho State. The Assistant Commissioner of Police in charge of Criminal Investigation Department in uh, Oshogo will be the head of that uh, that uh, desk, who is going to be collecting, uh, receiving um, offenses, and the venture into proper investigation of these offenses. And of course, we do the need through as our window. So we just want people to understand us. We want them to be on the same page with us. Uh, all of us are going to be on ground, including me. I'm going to be in Oshobas from tomorrow. And the DIG election, DIG in charge of us CID, who incidentally is the coordinating DIG for Southwest. Uh, DIG Johnson, Babatunde, Kokumo, MNI, is in Oshobas, I speak with you. Uh, to be assisted by four assistant inspectors, general police, uh, four commissioners of police, and we have election CP in Oshun, uh, who is uh, holding brief for CP or local day that has just been temporarily moved to first quarter as Abuja. We have CP Julius Alawari, who is going to be election CP in Oshun State. These are new faces, and I think uh, this time around we are having it good because we are not going to, to be at the mercy of a sitting governor or any politician or any VIP in Oshun State. Every policeman deployed to Oshun State for this election has been paid. They have been paid directly from the office of the headquarters officially to the accounts of all of them. So no policeman will go there and be looking at the faces of anybody. Say, oh, guy, I never chop. Oh, guy, I beg, how far now? That one will not come. Because right from a number say the Special General Police, IGV, Small Akali Baba, has been doing that to make sure that if you are not at the mercy of anybody, you will be focused, you will not be derailed, you will be able to do your job as expected of you as a law, a law enforcement agent. So this is what we have done, and I'm sure we are going there to do our job. We are going to be neutral, we are going to be professional, and we are going to enforce the law to the latter. That's, That's what we are going to do in Oshun State, to make sure right. we have free, fair, credible, and even acceptable election in Oshun State. Right. Very, very important point you make, and we hope um, after the elections we can come back and touch bases with you on uh, what your your frank and blunt assessment has been of uh, the police and security with the election. But before we let you go, one important aspect of the electoral process oftentimes has been the movement of men and materials uh, to the polling unit. We know that INEC has uh, discussions and has arrangements with the road transport workers and how this happens because it affects the, the start of the ballot, which is 8 a.m., and everyone has to be on, uh, at, at the point there. But, how the police going to move from one point to the other point? Has it been sorted out? Um, um, because, um, I mean, it, heaven forbid that we see policemen stranded and not being able to move uh, to the polling units uh, on election day. Well, this time, this time around, like I said, we are plan, we are plan ahead. Uh, we've made arrangements too with some transport companies to see how we have uh, easy movement of our men from their bases to various polling units. Uh, we partner with INA, we partner with so many transport companies, and this, this has been done. I don't think, I don't have to see any problem in this regard. Um, even areas where we have river line areas, we made a remain for both. So, Oshun, we are not having any serious uh, river, river line waterways in Oshun. So, everything is inland. So, we, we, we hope to have smooth uh, movement of our men from uh, their bases to various polling units. So, I, we don't, I don't have to see any, any problem. Not at all. Thank you very much. And it's always a pleasure to have Miwa Dejomi uh, speak with us on news of the Nigeria Police Force Public Relations Officer. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah. And you too. All right. Uh, we have the rest of the show to go. We still have uh, some talk to do with um, Blessing and Mobile Center in U over the crisis in Ukraine and how people are piecing their lives together. Please stay with us on news of. We'll be right back. <laughs>